one. Dun, 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 dun. Episode 10. Double digits. Can you believe it? That's crazy, man. We're on a different day, though, this week. What do you mean? Yeah. Life, dog. It happens. Life. But we still do it. We commit. We execute. We said we're going to do something for ourselves and for our listeners. We, we have to model that. I was a little worried about you. I thought you were going to cancel this week. No, dog. I'm about just kidding. That. I will cut you. <laughs> I will cut you. I did not I doubt you at all. No, nah, bro. If, if that ever happens, you find me, dog. You know where I live. I was thinking about giving you a little more shit than I did, but I figured I'd let it slide. Like, yeah, it's fine. We can do it tomorrow. What was my excuse again? Dude, you don't... Listen. You don't understand. This school is killing me, dude. It's, it's, it's probably around the same amount of coursework that I've been doing in the past, but... I don't know. I think maybe just because I know like I'm almost done that it sinks in how much work I'm putting in a day that I started timing it with that timer right there. Yeah, I saw that. Three that new little timer. hours a day. And that's midday. That's not at night. So it just causes an extra stress. So anyways, it was like, bro, if I don't put in the that uh, extra hour that we take up today, I won't finish the three pages I got to finish on average each day to finish the 16 page paper that's due on Friday. So it's that, that's what I'm running in my head. And that's not all the other stuff you're seeing me do. That's power to you, man. I, uh, I definitely have to say, I don't miss school like that for that exact reason. I had told my wife the other day, I was like, man, maybe after this I can get my PhD. And then we both looked at each you're other crazy. and we were like, no, nah. <laughs> no, bro. No, no, no. Cause I can't, I would have to do that. I would have to give everything up. I would have something would have to drastically change for that to ever happen for me. There's just no way you can't you can't do that. I, I don't see how people do it. Anyways, yeah, I mean, I feel like that's a good segue to get into our topic. You know, you had a busy day yesterday to, where we had to reschedule the podcast due today. Uh, schooling is part of your daily routine, so let's you know dive right into it. Um, you know what we are bringing today. Some fire is just. Setting up your daily routine, why to do it, how to do it, the point of doing it, uh, and then staying consistent with it. Well, and I think looking back to my last year and a half with going to school, it's been the daily routine that has allowed me to consistently do what I do. And I think that goes to, uh, I knew I would succeed at going to school because what I do, I do consistently well. It's how the business succeeded. It's how I was able to graduate from college, get my master's, do these things. Uh, but it came down to really the routines that I have set up in my life. Yeah, basically it's just you know developing habits that you do day in and day out that pertain to your goals. You know, no matter what they are, you know, fitness wise, in your case, school wise, you're setting a goal. Your goal is to get that master's degree. Now, everything you do daily is either going to get you closer to that goal or farther away from that goal. So, you know, you know, we came across a good quote today. It's, uh, we are what we repeatedly do. Mm. Okay. You know, you are a product of your best habits you do day in and day out. And I think for those that are really successful, they not only recognize that, but they actually have a plan set in place to cons- consistently do that. Versus those that might have good days because they by chance happen to plan their days out versus accident uh versus doing that accidentally versus doing it with purpose right like we have a routine for most of our days because we know that's how we can deliver consistency to move us towards progress yeah that that, that's the whole point consistency you know uh, we preach about it all the time at our gym consistency over intensity you're better off doing something daily very very small compounded over time then going jumping in full throttle some super super extreme and then falling off the bandwagon you know a little down the road yeah and i think nutrition is a great metaphor for that we uh, we we try to sell nutrition as a consistency thing right versus the individual that's trying to lose 15 pounds in two weeks that's intensity right where we're, we're saying listen if we can just change some habits with you to help you lose a pound a week but to do that long term we're going to build better habits so we don't have to have this conversation again with them. Yeah, no, I love that. Just piggybacking on the nutrition aspect. You know, you can't take someone that's eating McDonald's, eating fast food, you know, three times a day, every single day and say, hey, let's go chicken and broccoli right away. You know, you got to kind of slowly introduce, hey, let's just go fast food two times a day. Okay. Mm -hmm. Eventually leading to one times a day, eventually leading to, you know, no times a day. 
but you can't jump in too extreme. You gotta consistently make smaller changes, okay? And eventually the long process of that, the rewards will be you know, benefited. Yeah, and one of those routines, the most common routine that people sh should set up is their morning routine and, and really have a, a deliberate uh, idea of what they're doing to be able to produce the greatest chance of success to the rest of the day. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, you gathering positive momentum. You know, you wake up, you know, with purpose. Uh, you're setting the tone for the rest of the day. If you wake up, you're just going through the motions. You check your phone. You know, you get sidetracked. You're watching the sports center. You know, you don't wake up with purpose and set up a good morning routine. You know, you'll kind of delay on starting your day, and then your product your productivity will suffer. What uh, what's your morning routine normally like? Just curious. Well, I know that there's. And for most people, I mean, the times are different, but the idea is the same is that there is a gap in the morning where there is complete silence. Like, and if you can beat that gap, you're going to be able to get more things done uh, more productively. So for me, like when I have to coach my 5.30 a.m. class, I am up at exactly 4.02 in the morning. 4.02. 4.02. It doesn't beat. I tell my wife to do the same alarm. She won't do it because she thinks I'm not. She's got it's got to be a whole number. She does. She'll set an extra alarm for me at four or five. Mine is at four or two, and I'm up. Why or two? That's my favorite number. So I and it just sticks. It rings like okay. What do I got to do in the morning? I get up at four or two. Okay, so that's pretty early. So it's safe to say you're minimizing any risk of interruptions when you're waking up that early in the morning because you know uh, the rest of the world's probably still sleeping. They're sleeping. I'm not getting a text. I'm not getting emails. Um, there's nothing else that's calling my attention at that very moment. So what I get to do for the next hour is, uh, it is giving me the greatest chance of success because no one's going to, to interrupt that. So you're waking up 402. Okay, what's the next step? Coffee's already set, bro. I got the pod like sitting there. It's just automatic. Press the one button. I used to, uh, this goes back to giving my, myself the greatest chance of success. I used to have the drip coffee. And what happened is there was like four other stages, right, that it would take for me to do the drip coffee that I felt was like in the morning was causing a pain point. Mm -hmm. So I said, F this, bro. So I, I gave that away. Actually, I didn't throw it away. I gave it away. And then we uh, bought the, uh, the, the cup, the K-cup stuff, Keurig. It's a ghetto Keurig. But now from all that, I have one step in the morning because I've, I've already set the pot in. I press the start button and it makes it. Cups are even sitting in there. Okay. It's sitting in yeah, there. Yeah, we got a K, a K cup too. It's it's so easy. You know, you, I I just throw it in. I'll set it the night before, but throw it in, click it, coffee starts. That's uh, normally my second or third step. I'll, I'll try to get some, uh, I kind of bounce around. I'll do some form of meditation. You know, I, I've that had, early in it? Yeah, you know, as soon as I wake up, man. As soon as I wake up. How I'll, do you do that, bro? I got like a million things running my mind in the morning. That's why I do it. To just close it off? Yeah, close it off. Wake up a little anxious, you know. Let the meditation kind of get you back down, level-headed, mm -hmm. and then attack the day. I download that Headspace app. You heard of that? Yeah, I mess with it a little bit. Um, yeah, tell me more about it. Refresh my memory. It's just guided. It, it's, it's some guy. He sounds like an English dude. Or he's got some, <laughs> some accent. But, uh, I mean, it's soothing, you know. I'm still in the uh, is early. It is it floofy, though? I don't remember. It's been like a year since I had the app. To be honest, I'm fairly new into it. Uh -huh. I'm just trying to stick around. We're going back to that consistency aspect yeah, we just yeah, talked yeah, yeah. about. Like, I do feel some changes, uh -huh. but I mean, I'm not saying like, hey, I'm, I'm, my life is completely changed and I'm what, so clear-headed. So, when now. you're going, what are you looking for going into that session, and what do you consider success leaving that session? I'm basically trying to calm my mind down a little bit. Uh -huh. Okay, because you know, I'll wake up like. I'll put some pressure on myself yeah. waking up to, you know, get get active, get yeah, doing urgency, stuff, right? you know. Yeah. Like, you know, you might have, like you said, you'll have emails from the night before, you know, respond. I'll have some text messages, you know, uh -huh. some whatever, social media, you know, uh, feedback. So it's like, you know, put that stuff to the side a little bit and uh, try to get a little more level-headed. That's good, man. For me, is I, one of the combos we had is about teaching people when to find moments where they just have to become thoughtless where for me thoughtless is like it's like turning it's like looking at a blank page like when you look at a blank page there's nothing to process right and so in my mind to me that's 
building thoughtlessness because I know the first like 60 seconds from the moment the alarm goes off to I press stop and I get on my feet, there are thousands, thousands of thoughts that run through my head. And what I do as I walk into the kitchen is I say, ignore it, ignore it. Be thoughtless. Don't think about anything. Don't think about anything. Because I need that brain to kind of like like rev its engine mm-hmm. and like get it processing appropriately for being awake. Um, and by doing that, goes to what we talked about. Like when you do that, a lot of that anxiety that normally comes up that you don't that you try to process it never comes up because I'm I'm trying to become thoughtless in that moment. Yeah. So you're doing a form of meditation on your own. Mm. You're doing the same exact thing I'm doing, but mine's a little more guided. I like that. I almost feel like that word, we need to change it. Because like when you think meditation, you're thinking like, dude sitting Woo-sa. crisscross, woosah. That's a good point. That's you a really good point. One of those stuff Tony Robbins does. Oh, stop playing. <laughs> where, hey, what do we say where he, he hits a 360 spin before he goes on stage? Yeah, he'll jump on the trampoline a bunch of times, do like 360, get all fired up. But you see what he does in the morning for meditation, right? Oh, man, right? you got to, hey, what was that a documentary everyone's got to watch? What oh, was it? Oh, shoot. I'm not it's your all, guru. Yeah, I'm not your guru on Netflix. You have to watch but that. But he does a funny form of meditation where he like almost does his body weight shoulder press. He keeps pumping his arms up in there real fast. Uh, <laughs> it's entertaining. Um, yeah, so after meditation, I think I do something very similar to what you do. You kind of take out a piece of paper and you start planning out your day. Mm. You know, you, you come up with a game plan. Um, and that's a huge component. You know, you kind of set yourself a schedule to follow up for the rest of the day. Yeah, um, and we use this model in our gym. We talked about this when we do this with coaching, and that's like there are fixed segments in a group class where we know things have to get done, and there's there's time priorities for those things. Uh, and so we teach coaches how to re- reverse engineer the class because if they can work backwards, it'll it'll show them where there's space in between class to do other things or have talking points or uh, transition times between uh, skill sessions. For me, I do that in a longer time frame. So I take my my working day and I just work backwards. So I know for me working backwards is what time have I and my wife agreed that I should be home tonight? For dinner and stuff. For dinner. Yep. She's going to make dinner. It's 5.30. I have to be home from there. And then I look at everything else that I have that is a non-negotiable, which classes I teach, where's my personal training sessions. I need three hours to get in the office to do schoolwork. I need another hour for emails and phone calls. And so I'm putting that in the schedule and then those gaps in between are where uh, I can transition through. I can maybe find myself in the middle of the day, walk outside yesterday. Dude, I was behind the computer for two hours straight typing this paper and I said my head was gonna blow. And at that moment, I recognized that and where somebody else would just be like, let's just trudge through this, let's drink another cup of coffee. I left my phone in here, I walked outside and I sat in the sun for 10 minutes. I just, just like, yeah, nice little break. Didn't think about anything where I normally wouldn't do that. And when I walked in, I was literally re-energized. Yeah, no, I like that. You know, and uh, that's that's real good reverse engineering. That's something I probably could do a lot better. Uh, I kind of find myself working aimlessly throughout uh-huh. the day. You know, I'll uh-huh. have some tasks. Yeah. You know, I'll set my tasks, but my time management could could be a little bit better. And you know, like you just said, if you put your non-negotiables set in stone. And then kind of fill in the gaps. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, that's good, man. That's a nice little takeaway. And I don't make it a big deal, Brett. Like I have a post-it that's in the kitchen uh, drawer, and I do it right there in this small two-by-two two post-it. But I can fit that whole day on there so I know. there's just It just seems like I have more purpose when I have that. Um than when I don't, because I don't always do it. Some days I get lazy, right? I mean, this is the this is the routine. If it was easy, we didn't we wouldn't have to fight for routines. This is the whole point. But when I do do it, I just feel like I feel more accomplished at the end of the day. I didn't feel like the day took a hold of me where I had those moments of high stress because I knew what was coming. I knew what was coming next, and it didn't it didn't surprise me. Yeah, and then you're gaining momentum just checking these off as you do them. You know, check check check. Um, how do we develop this? routine during the day like why are we doing what we do what are these actions um going towards you know down the road Mm. you know you got to kind of align with what you do daily based on your long-term goals that you set out yeah you know you're setting these goals whether it's the first of the year whether it's you know some other random time hey i'm setting this goals to to you know build my business to a certain point to lose 30 40 pounds to you know you set these goals and then everything 
throughout your day, your daily actions got to pertain right towards these goals. Exactly. And, you know, I think sometimes we take for granted how highly driven we are. We, we would hope that everyone would be like us, and that's why we, we set these practices into place. But not everyone is like that. And we don't, we're not saying, hey, we want you guys to be gurus like this. We want you fired up for life every day. But we want them to understand that there is a process that the most successful people follow that have gotten them to this place. And the routine, the, the strategy that they take throughout their day is consistent across the board, across all these successful people. And so we want to mimic that so that we can produce the same effect towards whatever it is we want in life. So weight loss is a great, so someone wants to lose 30 pounds. They have to not only reverse engineer their day, they have to reverse engineer those months. So if they want to lose 30 pounds, we would agree that as trainers, they should lose one to two pounds a week. And so we take that out backwards and we say at 30 pounds, that's going to take you uh, 4, 8, 12, 16 uh, 20 that's gonna take you like seven months are you okay with that good so and then out of seven months we can plan that out and we would say at the 31st at the uh, th first 30 days we want you losing anywhere between four to eight pounds are you okay with that great and then so we reverse engineer that on a weekly basis what do we want to look at well on a weekly basis we need you to lose one to two pounds okay what do we need to do on a day-to-day -day basis for this to succeed and this is where we go to meal prep and eating clean food and eating real food and what's that look like on a day-to-day -day? and then that's when we get into the convo that we started with which is the daily routine yeah it's uh it, it comes back to the point to start small start simple you know, something we have to deal with regularly is someone coming to the gym and they want instant results. Mm. And we got to kind of talk them back off that cliff. Hey, you're not going to lose 20 pounds in a week. So you got to kind of, you know, get this mindset back to what you were just saying. Hey, it might take you this certain amount of time. Are you okay with that? So we're kind of reintroducing the idea. Hey, this is a steady grind. This isn't something that's going to be instant gratification. You know, nothing worth having comes easy or comes fast. So if we can kind of instill mm. that into our newer members that start small and simple, okay, uh, it's the way to go because then chances are you'll be able to s sustain that, okay, and once you do get the results, you'll be able to keep the results and keep climbing and getting better and better and better. If you lose 20 pounds fast, you'll probably put it right back on real fast. Yeah, because they didn't, they, they, they hacked the system to lose those 20 pounds fast, but in order to keep the hack, to, in order to keep the pounds off, you got to keep following this hack, and that's not sustainable and it's not consistent. They didn't develop any uh, good habits uh, along the way to help them keep the weight off, and I think that's why those who use these shortcuts uh, might get the results they want quicker than what we propose, but they're going to put it on a lot faster. Yeah, this goes back to something we've said uh, plenty of times on the podcast. It's enjoy the process mm -hmm. of, of doing this, you know, don't be so obsessed with the end result that, you know, you're getting anxious or, you know, you're not enjoying the moment, you know, take a step back, remember your why, why you decided to do this and enjoy the process. That's that much more enjoyable and, you know, it's not as extreme and it just comes back down to knowing, you know, slow, steady, you know, start simple, you know, you'll end up winning the race. Yeah, and I think the mistake, especially on social media now, is that we see a lot of success, but we don't know the back end. We don't know their their real story of how they got there and how much work they put into it and how, how they had followed through on this for 10 years, that their vision as a little kid was to uh, be a successful business owner and what they did along the way. All we see is their success, and I think that puts a facade from the truth of their routines that they've had in place for a really long time. Yeah, so you see these uh, people on social media, and I have the utmost respect for the people that tell you that, hey, it took mm. me 10 years to get here, Yeah, you know? And then you'll see the occasional, you know, IG star that'll say they got this overnight, and chances are they're either juiced up on some, you know, legal performance enhancing drug, something like that. Or it's fake. Or it's fake, you know, it's Photoshop, and you can kind of... I mean, I can't personally, you know, kind of distinguish who's the real deal. And, you know, I'll latch on to people like that uh, as mentors that have told you, hey, this has taken me 10, 15 years in the game. OK, that they got my respect. You know, I'm going to follow them. I'm going to you know, be on board with what they have to say because that's real stuff. Yeah. But someone that's going to say, hey, you know, I got this this easy way. You can too buy this or that. You know, I'm, I'm not following. I'm not buying it. Yeah, and it's scary because, you know, we have a lot of self-awareness for that. But, you know, as our members come in, we really have to uh, 
we have to self check them a lot because the, the case is, is they're falling for some of those lies. They're sharing stories with us and telling us about stuff they saw. And we have to, we have to self check them to be like, I'm not sure if that's really true. Um, and, and give them a better picture of, of what that's really going to look like from start to finish, right? Like that member who came in 30 days ago and the CrossFit Open started and he literally thinks he's going to make it to the CrossFit Games. And so because he saw all these images of all these people doing these workouts, he started doing some workouts and he thought he was that good. And so we had to lightly humble him to really get him to understand that like what you are seeing there is not what's actually going to happen. And so now that he's gone through the open, he's really, that's been his self check. Yeah, it's a, it's a humbling experience. And you got just got to make sure you're on point with your communication because you don't want to offend him or, or, you know, put out his fire of, you know, trying to, you know, to just kill it, kill the workout, stuff like that. But at the same time, you don't want him to set himself up for a letdown. For sure. And so for someone like him, what we were saying is like, okay, we, we gave him the story of like, hey, let's look at the games winner, and then we tell him the story of the games winner. And then after I did that, I said, really what you're going to need to do is master all these movements, and this is how you're going to have to do it. We need you coming in three or four days a week, and then after class, I need you to work on some of these skills. We start finding where his weaknesses are. He's not a good overhead squatter. He can deadlift for days, but he can't overhead squat. So when I see that, I'm saying, listen, if you want to get better, we need to find a way that you can consistently work on this overhead squat. So we're literally building in routines for him in his training cycle to be able to improve on those things because if he doesn't, if he doesn't put that in consistently, he's not going to get better. Yeah, we're just we're putting it, you know, the the priority on hey, make these adjustments, these little minor adjustments over time, okay? And uh, that's just reinforcing the the total point is make small adjustments, work on your weaknesses, get better and better, stay consistent, and uh, you'll develop more better as an athlete. Yeah, and I mean, you can transfer that into the daily routine, small, consistent uh, tasks that we can put in uh, con uh, daily that will turn into the success. T the success is in meeting the goal that we've achieved, something that wasn't existent that now has become existent. Um, yeah, yeah, that's powerful. Yeah, that's good, man. You know, uh, so we got that part starting off right, get on the right foot, you know, kill your morning, gather some momentum, uh, and you know, do your best to hang on throughout the day on, you know, just keep cranking, you know, uh, following your day, you know, I feel like the night routine can contribute just as much to your daily routine. You kind of got to recap what you did right, what you did wrong, uh, just kind of self-reflect on where you stood throughout that day and uh, something you can do to, to sustain it. You know, if you had a good day, what can you do to keep it a good day tomorrow? That's really good. You know, there's not sometimes throughout the day so there's things that we can't control but our daily routine and like you're saying that night routine we can take a lot of control where the, the the day routine is getting us going and that night routine is like you're saying offering self reflection on what worked and what didn't work uh, and it really as much as it as much as it does offer the opportunity to to guide us to get to bed and to do this all over again it uh, it provides a consistency that we're gonna need to succeed the following day. Yeah, you wanna go to sleep with a sense of fulfillment. Like, mm. hey, you know, uh, I hear this term a lot, win the day. You wanna go to bed, put your head on the pillow knowing you succeeded with what you set yourself out to do. You wanna go to bed with a sense of accomplishment, you know, and that comes down to just, you know, reflecting on what you did well, what you did wrong, you know, how can you get a little bit better. Um, you know, there's three components that we kind of talked about earlier that makes your day successful. You know, you got to work on three things. You know, how do you get stronger mentally? How do you get stronger uh, physically? And how do you get stronger spiritually? Yeah, and the obvious, the physical is obvious. That there has to be consistency that they're planning out their weeks, when they're coming to train, what they're going to do, make their training effective. We know if we can get them into group, their training is going to be effective because we put a lot of hours into our training program. We know that. But if there's individuals that don't come to group training, they need to put that on the schedule. They need to make it real. They need to write it down. They need to reverse engineer it throughout their week to make sure they're getting those training in. That's the physical comp component. We we know the benefits there. Yeah, you got a game plan. You got to set out you know, as close as you can to something that is regular, you know, a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 5.30 a.m., or a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 4.30 p.m., something consistent that 
it's just like clockwork, you know. And I feel like a lot of our members do a real good job at that. You know, they we always tell them as soon as we sign up, sign them up, hey, this is our reservation system. If you know your schedule, mm-hmm. go ahead, lock it in far out as you can. You know, a month, maybe a month at a time. You know, set yourself up because uh, it's a non-negotiable. You know, I'd say to say it's a non-negotiable to, to train and to work on your physical activity. Yep. And the, what we're going to talk about is the physical is just not independent. It's interdependent. It's going to help one of the other aspects, which is the mind. Like it helps physical training helps clear the mind. It helps uh, deliver all these chemical responses that help us feel good and, and really interact there as well. Yeah, no, I'm big on uh, it develops confidence. You know, mm-hmm. you go home, you look in the mirror, you know, you're seeing changes in your body. Uh, I like over the years, just in regards to personal training clients and our members, you know, I've seen them progress, you know, uh, and, and done just a great job. And I've just, not only has their physical appearance changed, but their, their mental aspect, their mental approach to life has completely changed. You know, they're, they're developing a form of confidence. And when, you know, when you asked me, you know, months ago to write down, you know, my coaching philosophy, why I did mm. that, you know, I, uh, I had to add the, the increase in confidence in there because, you know, I feel like that's really why I do this is to instill confidence that I've gotten from fitness myself. You know, if you can get someone happy with what they see in the mirror, they're going to be more confident. They're going to live a better life and it's going to help them mentally. Yeah, I mean, that's a really neat uh, understanding there. And that's that we're using the physical, the tangible to turn something intangible like uh, confidence into reality. That's really neat. Yeah, so we, we're basically, our, our tool for building confidence is physical training. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. And not only that, but what we started out with talking in the podcast, it, uh, it, you know, clears your head. You know, the people that work out, you know, in the mornings get a good workout in the morning, and they're kind of level-headed to start their day, okay? And then the same aspect of you training in the evening, you had a long day at work, okay, you had a lot of stuff going on. You know, you put that to the side, you come in and work out, it clears your head, like, you know, you could forget about the rest of your day that you just had. You know, it's giving you a sense of clarity, you know, inside that mental aspect that we kind of talked about on the the meditation component. Yeah, I mean, it's a form of meditation, in my opinion. It is. It's we, we, we talk about letting everything go when they walk into the facility, their only focus should be that moment. And that's why I love our program so much, because it forces you to not be able to think about anything else. You cannot Think about anything else in a moment of like 30 second go burpees, uh, one minute airdyne sprints. Like, you don't have the convenience like of these other training prog- programs out there to have other thoughts in your head because all we have right now is that moment. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm, I'm just reminiscing now. Yesterday, uh, during group class, there was a member that came in that seemed a little bit. She wasn't like sick or under the weather, but she didn't, she seemed a little bit down. Okay. You know, so we're, we're warming up and stuff. And, you know, I noticed I'm pretty aware in group class. So I kind of walk over to her and I'm like, Hey, you know, what's going on? Uh, you know, is everything all right? She's like, yeah. And she didn't give me the feedback I I wanted. So I'm like, you know, it's one of those days, huh? She's like, yeah. And I was like, well, you know, I just kind of reinforced the fact, Hey, you know, your training session is what's going on now. You know, it's one of the best stress relievers you can, you can Mm -hmm. find. So, you know, let's have a good time. And uh, when we, from that moment till when we ended up breaking class at the end of class, just the entire demeanor changed. Like awesome. She, she was smiling. And uh, if you can, you know, kind of brush away everything in life that's going on to kind of just, like we just talk about, enjoy the process of training, yeah. you know, uh, you'll leave way better in a, in a better mindset than you came in. Yeah, that's really good. You almost help that individual self-reflect, which is one of the things we're preaching. Like, okay, yeah, why am I here? Like, yeah, no one's forcing me to be here. So, uh, and that's that. That's our like our ultimate motto is like to keep training fun. Like, that's the end of our our, our mission statement because we realize that at the end of the day, like n- they're not getting paid to train, right? And if we can't make that a fun experience for them, it becomes a job. And the moment it becomes a job is the moment they stop to enjoy it stop enjoying it yeah no you, you got to keep it fun you got to keep it fun you keep coming back it's way more enjoyable so i think ultimately here if we're trying to sell anything on this episode is really like just have more conscious have a more conscious effort for what you do as a daily routine most people have it they don't even know it and it um 
I think we what we would need to do is have them audit their daily and nightly routine because I can guarantee if if they're feel unsuccessful or they're lacking motivation, it's probably directly ref, reflected to what they're doing or not doing. Yeah, on no, those that, ha- daily and, and nightly habits. Yeah, no, it's great. You know, you got to start somewhere and you got to start building it up to at the point you've set yourself up with these multiple successful habits and you kind of get into that cruise control, yeah, okay? Good. And then you're just, you know, you're basically starting a train, gassing a train, just fueling the train and eventually it just runs and runs and runs and you know, you look back 2 3 years down the road and uh, you've been doing this consistently all this time and then you just reflect on where you're at and you got to dedicate all your success for what you developed previously. That's really good, man. Um, yeah. And I think, again, we take this for granted because we're just self-motivated and we will constantly trying to adjust those habits to even be more productive and more fruitful. But for people that just haven't put uh, effort into those routines to just really just take a hard, clear, honest look at what they're doing or not doing and to put in habits, study good habits by successful people and try to slowly implement those, right? Not like... I have zero habits right now. I just wake up and I take a shower yeah. and I go to work. Like, don't just wake up tomorrow and add 10 habits. Like, slowly add these little routines into your, your mornings and see what happens. What, right? Because the goal of the habit is to be productive. And if it is to feel like it's causing you more headache or it's causing you more stress, then maybe that one's not going to work for you. Yeah, uh, just like you said, be productive. You know, we're not trying to be busy. There's two different ways. Mm. You know, two, those are two different things: being busy and being productive. You want to be productive. You want to knock out tasks that are getting you closer to your goals. You're not trying to just keep yourself busy. You know, you're trying to get closer to that end goal. And you know, it just comes back to uh, just realizing. You know, we've been there. They're at a starting point. Mm. We've been there. You know, we didn't wake up and have this perfect outline of just execution. You mm. know, we've been there. It just takes, you know, comes that back down to your why. You know, why do you want to do this? You know, go down your why, set up the routine, and just just execute. You know, and just understand it's not going to happen overnight, but it is doable. It's very doable. And uh, it, it's what what's the my favorite quote? Uh, the the journey of a thousand miles began with one step. Yeah. Just take the one step tomorrow, and and slowly build that up from there. Yeah, just get it going. Get the train going. Thanks, guys. We appreciate you. Episode 10, big deal, big deal. Talk soon. Hey, guys. Thanks a lot. Uh, and please, if you're listening and you, and you think we're dropping that fire and uh, you know we want to keep it coming, so we want to kind of boost up the uh, ratings a little bit, if you can leave us a review, okay, uh, and maybe even a comment, uh, we would greatly appreciate it. Thanks, guys. We appreciate it. Talk soon.